Hey friends, it's Teresa here and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day 29 in my 2021 October Daily album. And today I'm experimenting. I'm doing some product play. And my idea is to have, um, so somewhere on our shopping adventures, I found this little um, tic-tac-toe set from Target. And uh, it's got a little board that you put down on the floor and then these cute little chipboard X's and O's. And so I thought I would do the photo inside the O's and the X's as just a XOXO. And I'm gonna share just a couple of photos from our party table on Halloween night. And so I've got two three by three photos printed out. And then I've also been playing with creating a little pop-up. And um, so I really feel like kind of a Hallmark card maker here, but I wanted the, my, my concept for the layout is it would be XOXO and you could stand them up so that you get a little bit of a different experience on this page layout. And so what I've done is I've taken a couple of strips of pattern paper. They're uh, five inches by, oh, where did my ruler go? <laughs> five inches by one inch, I think. I don't wanna tell you wrong. Five inches by three quarter inches wide. And they're just folded at different lengths. I'll, sh I'll tell you uh, how I folded them to create the little pop-up so that they'll stand up. So what I wanted to do to in today's process video is just put that together for you. So first off, let me, uh, let me show you how I'm cutting the paper. This is five inches five inches wide, and I'm just gonna cut two three-quarter inch strips. There's one, and there's two. I'll show you with one, and then I'll um, speed up my process so that you can see the whole layout come together. And then I do the cheap, <laughs> the cheap method since this since they're small strips, I'm just gonna take my bone folder and create a crease here at one inches or one inch. And that's gonna create the first fold. The other folds are gonna be at three quarters of an inch. So I'm just lining up the bone folder. Don't tell the professionals this. I'm lining up the bone folder and securing my measurement of three quarters of an inch and then folding it up. And let's see, I've done that one, two, three, four times. Now I'm gonna make these folds a little bit stronger, obviously and going in the direction that I need them to go in. They're all gonna go kind of, we're just making a little box here. I was gonna say kind of like a circle, but this is a box, not a circle. <laughs> okay, and so now you have these four little squares and the last one is going to fold back the other way and layer over top of your base. So the the first one inch cut or one inch fold that we did goes over top of the bottom on the back. And then that will you'll have adhesive here and you to to hold these together you'll have adhesive right here to hold it to the letter, and then you'll have adhesive here to hold it to the background. So that's 
one and then I'm going to do a second one. Hopefully that's clear for you if you want to do this for yourself. And uh, then we'll speed up the video. So the first fold at one inch and the second fold at three quarters. The next one at three quarters and the last one at three quarters. All right, and then fold them back the other way just so that you have a nice, strong, secure fold. And then we're ready to make our, our box. So, pull everything around. There we go. Going like that. And then that's going to be our box. So when you apply your adhesive, you're going to want to lay it flat and seal that adhesive right there so that it has the right depth for folding down and for folding up. All right, so let me launch into the layout and I hope you enjoy watching. All right, so let's get started here. The first thing that I wanted to do was to go ahead and put the background page together. And what I've done is taken this sheet of pattern paper. It's from Fancy Pants, a little bit scary. And I had a partial sheet of this and a full sheet of this. And so this is how I'm making the pattern paper go all the way across uh, with what I have. And so that actually worked out really nice. Um, I think the, the plaid part is like three inches and then the, the banner part was like six or six and a half or something like that. And then I just used the, the little black, um, cutting mat just to make sure I get the size to where I want it. And so then I've got a three inch hole punch. The, the O's are actually a little bit bigger than three. They're probably more like four inches in the outside diameter. Um, so I used my three inch punch just so that it would be, it would fill the circle pretty well. And then I would be able to adhere it on the back. Now, if that bothers you, <clears throat> You can totally, you know, cover it with another pattern paper. I did not really worry so much about the back of these elements. Um, Cause who's gonna, who's gonna turn your album upside down and look back there anyway? Um, if, if they do, then maybe they don't need to be looking at your scrapbook album if they're looking for the mistakes or <laughs> looking for the the forgotten parts or what I don't know anyway so once once I got those images uh, punched and cut out then I figured out you know kind of where I want it on the layout I also realized that the X's are not quite flush on the bottom so I trimmed just a little bit down on each of us, on each of them. And then the key is to remember which end you trimmed, but it's pretty recognizable. They're, they had a, a bit of a rock, <laughs> a bit of a rock and roll to them. So, and then I'm also gonna cut the other strips. I had just enough of the plaid to do the other X, and then the O's are gonna have a different they're just going to have to have a different pattern paper. And that's fine. Again, you know, who's going to be looking back there? I will show you a photo 
at the end so you can see the back of the letters and how this worked out. And so here you can see how I'm creating that little box and then adding the adhesive there and adhering it to the back of the X, making sure that it's all flush on the table. And of course, it doesn't quite have the stability without two. And this sort of um, kind of concerned me a little bit because I was like, maybe the O won't stand up as well because it will only have one little box behind it. Um, so I'm still kind of working through in my mind how to, how to make it more stable and how to, I, I really thought I wanted to put them together that I want, when you lift them up, I want them to lift up together. So that led me to adhere the, um, right hand box to the O itself as well. So now they're all going to be one unit and you'll see how that works out here in just a moment i'm just putting adding the little adhesive that i need and um, going ahead and adhering the x down putting it into place i am keeping the x and its little strips all the way <laughs> all the way on the plaid and um, truth be told, I'm kind of leaving the banner background the way it is. Um, one, I always feel like when I do an elaborate page like this, the focus remains on the elements, the elements and the movement that they create and the view you get when you look straight on. And that's the main focal point. And so then everything else can kind of be left a little bit simple. Um, so I had a five inch strip of that plaid pattern paper that's from Simple Stories and so I'm going to use that for the O's and I'm going to go ahead again and build my little box with the, the five inch by three quarters of an inch strip uh, scored and folded at one inch, three quarter, three quarter, and three quarter and um, then bend those back to where they need to be and add the adhesive and add it onto the O so that the O has a little bit of stability here. And this is actually, this was kind of fun. I did experiment before I started my process video. Um, so I, I kind of knew a little bit better what I was doing. I, I don't think I've ever seen this done in a scrapbook layout, but it did remind me of like a, a pop-up card or a Hallmark, a little Hallmark card. I don't know. Um, but I just thought it was fun. A fun little interactive element. Um, then I also had a little bit to trim off. Sometimes that will happen. Um, you'll have a little bit to trim off and that's fine. So here you can see where I'm going to go ahead and uh, give the little O its prop. I'm trying to make sure that the photo is level. Um, if you look closely, the other side didn't come out, didn't quite come out so level. But by the time you put that red line tape down, it's down. So I'm not going to show you the other side, um, just in interest of time, because this is a little bit longer of a process than normal, but they're both done here. And for the purposes of adding the embellishments and the title and things like that, I'm going to leave the X's and O's down so that I can kind of work with them. I already know I want to add a few little puffy stickers and things like that. Um, but I did have this puffy title pack that I had never used before. <laughs> so let's do that today. Um, I liked the ha ha ha. Um, and then I thought I would do treats and then the word spooky over top of it. 
but I realized that there wasn't really enough room for that. So blah, 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 rewind, <laughs> undo that. And I just decided to do another, um, another long word. Okay, I decided to use the spooky word just by itself. You could add a little stamp underneath that if you wanted to or something different. The little spider webs look really cute in the corners. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go back to my trusty little stash of puffy stickers here. Um, whoops. Let's add a, a little word strip to each side from Ellie Studio and a little treat bag. And let's see what else. Um, ghosties. You gotta have ghosties. I've totally loved using these little ghost puffy stickers. Um, I do have new ones. I have new, a new, new little additions to my stash coming. So I'll be sharing that. Um, I will be sharing my, uh, foundation pages and album prep for my 2023 album. Uh, not next, well, yes, next week. Whoa, that came up quick. All right. Um, so that's going to be fun. You'll get to see how I'm planning out my album for this year and getting it ready for October 1. Also, just another programming note, day 30 in this album has already been completed. I will put a link to that process video at the end of this video. And of course, you can find it in the playlist already, which will be linked down below in the description box for you. And it's always linked in the description boxes so you can catch up on the previous videos and so you can stay tuned with the future videos there are only two videos left in this series day 31 and the final flip through um and the final flip through i'm gonna hold off on because i still have day 26 is a design team project so I'm going to wait until that goes live and then I'll do the, the um, flip through for you probably the last week of September. So you will get to see a final flip through. Okay, so you can see here the little um, embellishments that I added, the little label and the number 29 from Vicki Booten. And then I'm adding a little bit of black and white twine. Um, originally I thought I was going to put a bow on both sides, but, um, sometimes the universe has other plans for you. And this is all I had of this particular twine. So no bow here. I'm just going to tie it in a knot and put the knot behind it. Stick that down with some scotch tape so that it stays in place and then call it a day. <laughs> And that is this layout completed. Uh, be sure to catch the photos at the end. And I will have this on my blog too at the end of the week. So you'll be able to see more of the details there too. Thanks so much for watching and for sharing all your lovely comments with me. I appreciate you so much. And I'll see you back here again very soon. Bye-bye.